start by clicking a point, and then click to another point, and I'm going to move it around. Now, if I want to change the direction of the next line or start from a sharp point, I'm going to hold the Alt key. What the Alt key allows you to do is to move this anchor point around or bring it back to zero, which is right here, so that therefore you get a point. So if I move it there and stop, now my next line down here, I'm going to start and I'm going to get a, get a point instead. And now I'm going to leave that point there. I'm going to leave the anchor right here so my next point maintains that radius. And it gives you a nice smooth curve. I'm going to stop there. I'm going to go again. And I'm not going to drag it now. By not dragging, you'll, you'll start at a zero position. So your next point, um, you'll get a nice sharp point to it next one and I'm just going to keep bending and you know I'm just trying at this point to kind of create something you know kind of unique and you know not too crazy and I'm just kind of messing around sometimes it's fun just to mess around and see what you come up with you know notice I'm just I'm bending this curve around the other thing you can do is you hold space you can then move the whole line segment you're working with around and try to kind of match that curve happy with it right there. Again, I'm going to hold the Alt key so I can move this around. I'm going to return it back to zero. And I'm going to start my point again. So I'm going to come right about here and I'm going to re-bend that arch. You know, this is just a very simple you know, blade-like, flame-like tribal. I'm going to leave this point way out here so I can get a long sweeping hook. See how that works? It starts to give you that nice hook already. Same deal again. You know, see, I'm just pulling it around and you know, trying to keep it smooth. But you know, I don't need to be too concerned if I got some bumps in the road and some you know, shaky lines because I can go back and edit those later, which I'm going to talk about. So I'm going to leave that there. Now, if you already unclicked and you left this anchor point out here, but you want to you know, readjust it, what you do is when you're outside, not you don't have the mouse down. Then you hold Alt again, and it brings up this Convert tool. Now I can grab this anchor, and I can move move it around on its own after the fact. I'm going to put it back to zero. And now I'm going to close this off. See that little circle pops up next to the crosshair? That means you're closing out the, uh, the whole unit. Okay, so, you know, that's a pretty basic tribal. There's some things I'm not happy about it, uh, so we're going to go through and readjust it. You know, I can then select the whole thing, and I can shrink it, I can stretch it, you know, I can rotate it around, you know, and try to come up with something from there. So, what I'm really not happy with is this area here. You know, it's kind of, everything else is pretty sharp and smooth, and this one's kind of kind of bulky. So, what you do, instead of using the, the complete select tool, this black arrow, you select the white one. And the white one lets you select individual nodes. That's what these are called here. These nodes are the data information that tells from point to point what the arch is. And when you're using a plotter or something like that, that's what gives you the data information for the plotter to actually work. You're dealing with what's called a vector graphic, not a pixel like a Photoshop drawing or JPEG or anything like that. These points are all mathematical data. So from point A to point B is a specific radius or arch. Uh, so I'm just going to select this one point here see I can move it around and kind of reshape it and with that one selected I the anchor is already there and I can kind of recurve and restretch this line I can also hold the space key again and move it all around and to try to reshape it so that looks pretty good I'm pretty happy with that type of look Let me show you a couple things I think I want to widen this out and show you another couple options purposely making it fat right through here because I want to do a cutaway and give it almost like a uh, you know big hook um, so I'm going to show you how to do that really easily you know something you can plan after the fact you know again you can select any point you can move them around you do something you don't like control Z that's an undo uh, so right now I'm pretty happy with that like I said I'm leaving this fat for a reason and I'll show you why I do that um, we're going to bring up the rectangle tool, the shape tool, 
which has, you know, rectangle, rounded rectangle ellipse, polygon star, flare tool. We're going to go into the ellipse tool, and you see, you know, you can make any type of elliptical or circle. You hold shift, you get a circle. You hold alt, it moves from the center instead of moving from the, the, um, the end point. So, but I want, I want an oval. So I'm going to take an oval here. I'm going to bring it into position, and with the general selection, I can still manipulate that shape. You can see what I'm doing. I'm placing it where I want it. Now, here's the trick. Every object in Illustrator is its own object, so kind of like construction paper, you have one part that's above another part, and for certain effects, it depends on if it's over the object to get a certain effect or under the object. So, right now, because I just created this one, it's technically on top. Uh, so, if I was to fill this in, you can see how that works. I'll give this one a color. See, right now it's on top. So, I want to put it underneath. So, what I'm going to go is up to Object, Arrange. And I'm going to send it to the background. See how that drops it behind? Now, you can tell that this black tribal is above the red oval. So, another important tool to get familiar with in Illustrator is the Pathfinder tool. This whole dialog box here. There's many things you can do as far as if I want to weld these two together. I'll show you how to weld. I'm going to take the color out of this and get back to just a standard black. Just a black outline. If I want to weld them together, this shape tool here, this is a combine. If I hit this and then expand it, always you have to expand in Photoshop once you're happy with it. So I'm going to hit expand, and you see how that creates you know, one solid, solid shape. Now that's not what I wanted to do in this thing, so I'm going to undo that twice because I got to get rid of the expand. And what I really want to do is cut this oval out of this tribal to create a kind of a cool shape. So easiest thing to do. rotate it and kind of fit it in. Yeah, I think that's about where I want it. Now remember, this is underneath this one, so I'm going to select them both. And what this one does, this is one of my favorite tools, this is the minus back tool. So it's going to minus whatever's in the background out of the foreground image. So watch what happens here. I hit this tool, and boom, I get a real cool tribal hook there. If I don't like the way that looks, I can undo it go back, reshape this out, kind of reposition it around where I want it. Yeah, see I like this right here, it's a little sharper than the other one, it's sharp here as well. Select them both again, remember this is in the background, this is in the foreground, and we're going to cut it away. And nice, we get a really nice shape there. And we can do it again, just as a refresher, I'll do it quick. background, object to range. Get real familiar with the shortcuts. These are the shortcut keys listed over here. Uh, shift, control, and plus the bracket. That'll drop it down. So I'm going to drop that beneath. Again, select. And I'm going to cut it away. Uh, it was a little too tight, so I got this line crossing here. So I'm going to readjust that. I'm going to go back to control Z, undo. I'm going to move it out just so it's outside. And I'm going to go back and do the same thing. And that's it. And that gives you a quick, basic, basic tribal. Say if this was for a piece of artwork and I want to mirror image it, this is where the computer really comes in handy. You know, we used to always do these by hand on the bikes and make crossover templates and mirror image templates and pounce patterns to duplicate an image on a bike, um, which sometimes involves cutting directly on the motorcycle uh, substrate. We don't really want to do that uh, if we don't have to. So for something this simple, I'd probably do it by hand on a bike. Um, but when you 